If you are also running passenger missions from Quince, stick around because today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks how you can speed up your runs and make your runs more efficient. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth, a strategy meant to Elite Dangerous. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about how you can make a vast amount of money using uh, passenger missions in uh, a system called Quince. If you haven't watched that, I highly suggest you go up and uh, click the more info icon because there will be a card for that. Because this video is going to build upon that and we're going to talk about some methods that you can use to speed up your run and to be more um, effective to get you the best possible amount of credits per hour. Because I guess this is the main reason why most people do this. So let's go um, go right ahead. And the first thing I want to talk about is when you select your passenger missions. Um, because there's something you need to consider here. Should you keep board hopping to get the highest paying missions to maximize your um, credit per run? Or should you just take whatever's there and just go with it? Now, if we make some very, very quick calculations here, let's say that you're making 30 millions per hour, which is definitely doable. In, um, in a larger ship. For instance, I'm in the Beluga Liner. I think I can make 35-ish, but let's just say 30 because it's easy to um, to calculate with. That means that you're making uh, half a million each minute. So let's say that I'm in, in a situation uh, right now, like this one, where I have filled up most of my cabins and I have a few um, business cabins left in this case with uh, room for three passengers. And we can see you have a different um, variety of missions. There's one here for 780,000 credits. Then there's some here for 270,000 uh, credits, much lower. And there are some here, 400, 500, um, and one here for 650. That's pretty good as well. So in this case, it's a pretty no-brainer. Of course, you're going to start by taking the 781, and we're going to put that in one cabin. And this one down here is also pretty good, so let's take that. Now, next... I have one cabin left, and the highest mission I have right now is the one here for 530. But let's say I only have like 400,000 credit missions, and I know that I can get missions all the way up to uh, 700,000. So should I take the 400,000 mission and just go, or should I begin board hopping to try and get a mission that pays out better? Now, if we do the quick uh, quick math again, let's say so you make 500 thousand credit half a million each minute if you make 30 million per hour if you take the 400,000 credit mission you essentially lose um, 300,000 credit that you would otherwise gain for having a higher paying mission in that cabin but the time you spend time getting a, the better mission and the 300,000 credits sums up to a total of what's that 36 yeah 36 seconds so if you're looking at a 400,000 credit mission um, and you are considering should you go for a board hop and get a higher paying one or should you get the one you have? If you believe you can get a mission that is 300,000 more in uh, less than 36 seconds, then yeah, go for it. If you can't, then just take the mission that you're offered because otherwise you're, spent, you're, you're wasting time board hopping. And what I often found is that it's much more efficient just to Take what you got right now because getting out, loading into the game again, like again, this depends on how fast your computer is, of course. So in this case, I would now have a five hundred and almost forty thousand, which is actually pretty good. So I'm just, but definitely got to take that. Um, but if I was offered lower paying missions, I would probably just take the lower paying one anyway and then go. But if the mission was only like a hundred thousand, then I would probably board hop because then I have. What, just over a minute, a minute and, a minute and 12 seconds for the 600,000 um, different? And I believe I could get a higher paying mission um, in, in in about a minute. So, so that would, in that case, I would definitely do it. So again, when you're running, calculate the um, how much you make each minute. And then based on that, uh, decide whether you should both go for, for another board hop or for... Um, or just take the missions that you offered. But in most cases, it's much more efficient just to go with the missions that you are currently being offered. The next thing I want to talk about, that is when you exit the station. First of all, know your ship. Know where your cockpit is on the ship um, and how your ship is placed. Now I know that the, the Beluga liner here, the cockpit is kind of at, uh, at the front. If we can go out here and have a, a quick look. 
you can see the cockpit is at the front and a little bit at the bottom down here so i would probably aim low in the hatch um especially because of these fins back here have a tendency to, to hit the um, to hit the top and get caught um so again know your ship especially if you're flying the bigger ones so you don't hit um so don't hit the docking hatch and see if I can actually get out here without uh, without hitting anything. And remember, as soon as you are outside the docking hatch, the station is going to rotate. You're going to leave its sphere of influence. Um, going to do this very nice and gentle for the purpose of the video. Anyway, and as soon as you're out, this is another trick here. You can go out and you can actually exit to the main menu. There we go. And it's the, the blue uh, counter and uh, the UI needs to be uh, to be gone, so you need to be probably outside the station. And this trick is really only viable if you have a fast computer and a slow ship. Because you can see, as soon as I log in again, I am now, what, 10 kilometers away from the station. Um, and I didn't have to silent run out, so you can like teleport outside the station and out here I could just power up my frameshift drive and I could then go to, uh, to Gala's Ascension. Cross guard here, select it, power it up and then begin to align. Um, again, this is more effective if you are on a um, on a fast computer um, and you're using a slow ship. Um, but you can save just a few seconds if you're really going into the absolute speed runs here. Okay, the next thing here is once you arrive at Galen's Ascension, you of course target the beacon and then you should begin to move forward, not bumping into any ships of course, fly forward, not too fast, don't want to bump into it. But as soon as the scanning is complete, there we go, you power up your frame shift drive and you begin to turn around until you see on your heart down below that the target is right behind you. Because then you know you're moving in the exact opposite direction. And this is when you lock uh, onto the station. Don't do it inside the... Um, don't do it inside the, the actual um, area, just... Get out as fast as you can, and um, by turning around, you're going in approximately the right direction towards the station. Um, and that's going to save you a few seconds, so you don't have to spend time like locking up, aligning, jumping out. Just as soon as the scan is done, start your frame shift drive, and turn around, get away, get out of there. Okay, so now we are approaching the station, and I think they added uh, in one of the latest patches, is you can actually see this orientation of the station now. Um, down here at the bottom, you can see it changes as I fly around, meaning I can now actually align myself up. So I'm aiming a little bit below the station because I want to get down in such a way that I am actually getting, this is actually pretty good, getting um, out of uh, the uh, hyperspace facing the docking hatch. So you can see down here, right now it looks pretty good, meaning I came out of hyperspace facing the docking hatch. Um, a lot of people ask me how I get into the station. Some people seem to be having a lot of problems getting in um, because the ship are overheating. Of course, we have to sign and run because we have illegal passengers that they don't like to be scanned. Important part here, never boost. You do not boost. Oh, need to request docking here. You never boost when silent running. As soon as you boost, your heat is going to shoot up and you're going to overheat like crazy. So never, ever boost when silent running. Um, and again, we're just slowly going to aim for, for the docking hatch here. And if you're having problem overheating, I highly suggest... See if I can get in here without getting hit. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, if you have a problem with... Oops. Overheating, I highly suggest you upgrade your power plant to an A-rated power plant. It doesn't have to be the highest... Um, the highest possible... Uh, rank so you can rank it down to a level lower if you don't need all the power but i highly suggest that you go for an a rated because they're more heat efficient so you don't generate as much heat for each power that you use um so that should help your uh, ship stay cool while you're silent running and once you're in here of course it's just a matter of handing in the missions and then going back again getting more missions um and making another run so I hope you found uh, some of these uh, tips and tricks uh, very useful. If you did, give the video a like down below and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, I will see you guys in space. I also hope you will support the channel by either becoming a Patreon or making a one-time donation. Links for both are in the channel description. It will mean a lot and all the money raised is going towards better equipment and software.